out. So Frank, first of all, I would like to thank you very much for joining us on Dojo Live today here at High Tech 2024. Uh, the first question really is just a follow-up of your very impressive career. If you could give us a background of you know, your your role, your experience, and what that's kind of led up to, and your passion, how that's influenced your time with the Safe Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity, Kimberly. Nice to meet you. Well, I've been uh, in the hotel industry for a long time. We won't tell you all the years, how long it's been, but it's been for a long time. And I started uh, out being very interested in hotels due to a hotel show called Hotels Hotels. It was with uh, James Brolin back in San Francisco at the Fairmont. And I loved the atmosphere. I loved the hotel uh, business. And I started doing apprenticeships uh, in Europe or did an apprenticeship in Europe. And in the precursor, I was working in hotels getting to know the hotel business while I was on school vacation. So that started uh, to wake my interest in the business. And then it evolved from there. And uh, I got inspired by my father who worked overseas for, for many years, especially in the Middle East. And I traveled around the world uh, thanks to the uh, companies that enabled me to do so. And uh, eventually I landed with Sabre on the technology side of the business. And uh, I'm thrilled to be here. This is a cool trade show. Very cool. Uh, it's and one... Sabre has a great, great setup, by Thank the way. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. And we're always looking forward this year to get together and uh, to talk the story. We talk about what we're thinking about the future, how the business has evolved, how hospitality is evolving, how clients are thinking differently about solving some of their customers' pressing problems. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's an exciting time. Definitely, definitely. Now, I guess your Synexus solution needs no introduction. <laughs> with all types of things, your, your CRS, the booking uh, systems, the engine, property hub, all of those things. But you do have a very new edition. I think it launched just this past week, your concierge AI. Congratulations, yes. first Thank of you. all. Thank you so much. if you could tell us a bit more about that solution sure. and its impact on the industry. Yeah. Maybe I, uh, I sort of start with that the, the central reservation systems in the world have sort of evolved over the years. And uh, since we partnered with Google about five years back, to um, transform our business into the cloud, it's no longer really only a central reservation system. It's a true platform mm -hmm. and where applications are interconnected and you can start leveraging you know, the security, built-in security in the cloud. You can leverage scalability. And of course, you can leverage modern technologies. That was the most important and crucial component of our transformation project. So uh, artificial intelligence has been around for a long time. I've actually worked in a company called Brand Karma 10 years, 12 years back. Yep. And uh, we um, looked at sentiment analysis and we helped customers to understand how guests feel during their journey. Um, and so it's not new. What is new this time around is generative AI, large language models, are very good in solving uh, problems that happen to do with text, with pictures, with video. And the technology is really accelerating and returning results in a very fast way and fashion. Really big, big data, which would take a human a long time to search through. Um, and so what we're doing is we're utilizing this technology on our platform in many different areas of the platform. And we're starting with helping our customers to solve problems faster. So our help desk teams, our implementation teams are equipped with concierge AI. And uh, it helps them to solve problems respond to inquiries faster, find, you know, to the complex problems that we have, easier solutions mm -hmm. and drive uh, a higher turnaround, greater guest satisfaction, and make sure that our customers can go back and drive more revenues. Perfect. What is happening in the industry to kind of prompt the creation of concierge AI? And maybe what are some future applications that you see for Gen AI moving forward? Gen so, AI. Yeah, I think, I think generally... Um, when it comes down to artificial intelligence, the industry also talks about you know, the, uh, the side effect of hallucinations, right? So if you have a lot of data available, AI is very good at making things up if it doesn't have, <laughs> if it doesn't have context. So we create context through controlling the data that goes into the analysis. So for example, we have 15,000 pages of content for our Nexus platform. That's the data set that we're focusing on. And then through human review and through automatic learning, we help AI to understand the context between the different applications, the problem solving aspects. And with that, we create a very high hit rate or an accuracy rate. Right. And we train the model over and over and over, and then we utilize it 
internally first in, with our own teams, and then it's eventually being extended to help our customers through voice-enabled uh, search or through typing through the search engine through our own cockpit search engine. So that's that's what that's what makes it so different, and that's that's what we do. Yeah. Perfect. Now I, I also understand and you, we we spoke and um, we got these buzzwords here: Gen AI. You mentioned data. I think fifteen thousand was your number. I think that was an uh, understatement, yeah, but yeah. something <laughs> along those lines. Yeah. And another buzzword I hear a lot is cloud. What of these three would you kind of be giving your prioritization to, or is there something else out there altogether? No, I think you know we we decided um, to maybe stop even innovation about three years ago. Uh, we said like, hey, maybe we have to stop our innovation activities a little bit in order to maybe accelerate our cloud transformation. We had a cloud transformation plan over many years, and we thought about you know the, the cybersecurity issues that we're facing. We thought about the large data models. We thought about you know being truly global and scalable. Um, and we said, hey, we we actually have to accelerate to get into the cloud in order to maybe even innovate first, fur further, and farther and faster. Uh, and that's why we said over a year period, okay, we're, we're not doing innovating as much, but yeah. we, we innovated, we moved into the cloud. And so now that we're in it for almost two years, we see more and more abilities and capabilities coming through. And uh, we have a fantastic technical team all the way around the world. We have people in Montevideo, we have people in Krakow, we have people in uh, Bangalore. We have our technical teams, of course, in Dallas as well. And we have great international collaboration together with our clients to think about new use cases. You know, what is sort of the, the big pressing problems that we would have to overcome? Mostly related to resolving manual processes okay. through automation. Uh -huh. And uh, so that's where we spend a lot of time. Perfect. Now, talking about those use cases, your retail studio, you've got two mm -hmm. new use cases that you've developed that you're also kind of showcasing here at High Tech, I understand. Can you speak to those a bit? Sure, sure. So firstly, why retailing? Uh, that's I think that's an important question. Well, number one, uh, I moved to the U.S. three years ago. It's going to be three years soon. And I'm a fan of Amazon. Yeah, and I'm a fan an of what's your favorite food? Oh, it's like I, I got so many. I have no favorites. <laughs> They're all good. But uh, Amazon Prime is, is a prime example of how, um, you know, clever use of personalization is driving conversions and driving revenues. And, you know, the customer is really treated like and educated in the e-commerce world through this notion of commercialization, digitization, and personalization. Mm -hmm. And when customers now come into hotels, they expect a similar treatment. And the interaction, for me, reviews, I think, are really... I like to hear what other people... I don't buy anything on Amazon without seeing no. what other people say first. Well, yeah, it's the commentary of others, but I think it's also the convenience and then the fact that when I search... Mm -hmm. uh, our recommendation engine, for example, is learning from the searches that you facilitate on the booking engine, and it then can uh, reply with a much higher accuracy, with much higher preferences. That leads to higher conversions, that leads to greater revenues. And so we invested into retailing because we believe that's the future for a hotel to actually generate incremental revenue streams. Today, uh, think about it. When you go to a hotel, in all of the cases, in most of the cases, you can only consume um, services that are provided at the hotel, when you're in the hotel, there's no ability for you to digitize these assets and bring them into the booking funnel. And we invested into that idea. We believe, I would like to have instant confirmation available at the time of booking. And it's a difficult technical problem to solve. And that's what we did within our infrastructure, within a rebuild of our architecture. Think um, an inventory store where each item has an SKU, a stock counting unit. Mm -hmm. So we replaced our old platform with a modern SKU type platform okay. where a hotelier can literally assemble any type of product. And you as a customer, you can choose any type of combination of the product. That's, that's sort of is the starting point. And it, it culminates into the evolution of maybe I don't need to book a room. I can technically book anything else. And so our latest innovation is the removal of the need to book a room. So think of Shopify for hotels. Right? All right. So you can go to the platform or to the booking engine and you can book a room. You don't have to, but you can book the spa treatment. You can book transportation. You can book the cabana at the pool. Um, and so those are the latest new and cool things. And we have acquired two companies over the last 18 months. Uh, one is called Nuvola. Yes. Uh, it's an operational platform. Um, that handles front of the house, back of the house, and guest communication. 
But we did acquire Nuvola for one particular cool thing they do. It's a ticketing platform. Uh -huh. And it allows you to take a newly created offer and place it into the property management system faster. Nice. Um, so that's an innovation that we're introducing uh, embedded in the platform. And then we bought TechAssembly. TechAssembly is a platform that uh, handles storefronts. It builds cool customer storefronts um, and gift card platforms. Nice. So to help our hotels to sell all these beautiful things now digitized in the booking funnel. So here we are. So I'm hearing efficiency is another one of oh, those big words. I, I hear dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, efficiency uh, and dollars. I, I hear dollars. Efficiency so, and dollars. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Of course, it's convenience for our customers, high personalization. Uh, it's a much faster execution. It's a, a very... Uh, easy to manage environment, and of course, that leads to uh, uh, improved customer satisfaction, more dollars, more retention. Yeah, perfect. You know, efficiency, dollars aside, this might be a kind of trick question or a difficult one, it doesn't have to be one word. But if you could sum up what you feel the future of travel, hospitality, tech is in one, maybe two, three, four words. What would that be? Oh, that, that's very difficult for me. My, my, my team would probably start smiling now. So, okay, Frank, one <laughs> word that doesn't happen. So I, I think there is a tendency for people to think that technology is going to replace the human being. Um, I, I don't believe that at all. I believe that the human interactions are critical in uh, uh, treating customers, being hospitable, hospitable, being a guest, being a host, and you know, personal interactions mm -hmm, like we mm -hmm. have today yeah. are hard to replace. I think that technology will continuously help um, us humans to be better at what we're doing and spending more time in areas that truly matter in terms of retention, building relationships, and let the tech piece of the equation help you to do that job better. That's what I believe. All right. So the, the irony of the future of tech being human. It's that I, I like that a lot. Yeah, right. yeah. So uh, last word, and this talking about the hospitality was, wasn't planned, but I do want to know what's one of your favorite human hospitality experiences that you've had um, as a guest? I, I had many, I have many, but I, I think one of my favorite brands is Four Seasons. I has been for many, many years when I was living in Asia, I had the, the pleasure to be in many of the, the properties. And I just think the way how they put the human first in training team members to really recognize you. Mm. Um, the little tricks, you know, reading the tag on the luggage, it's not that complicated, right? But being super attentive and just maybe helping somebody walk you through the resort who is, it's a big resort, you don't know where to go. And the gardener, you know, stops doing the work and comes along and says, uh, sir, ma'am, can I help you? Mm -hmm. And they accompany you to the restaurant, for example. I think that's like uh, hospitality taken to a different level. And it's unexpected. And I think that's where hospitality hits most, when it is coming at a time not expected. And those are the memories that you create and you always will speak fondly about that experience. And you know, 30 years later, I still talk fondly about my experience at Four Seasons. Of course, there are many hotel chains who get that right. Um, but I think Four Seasons is one who's also very well acknowledged and recognized for doing that really well. Right, well, thank you. Thank you very much, Frank Trampert here at Saber. Um, you and Saber and rest of your team have an amazing high tech 2024. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you very much. Pleasure is mine. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye for now. Bye.